Hurricane season, 2020, episode seven. We're gonna be talking about some coolers and some of the ways you can make your own ice. Coming up next. So welcome back to Hurricane Season 2020, Episode 7. My name is Charles, and this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And I'd like to thank you for joining me. So today's video is on coolers and also on th ways to make ice. Now, if you don't have a generator and you have a hurricane coming, um, you may want to invest in having some different size coolers and making sure that you're, if you can, make your own ice at home because bags of ice are going to go quick. And then after the storm goes through, a lot of stores won't be open um, and you're not going to be able to get ice. So you want to try to pre-make ice ahead of time. Once you see a storm maybe heading in your area, you're going to want to start to make ice, make room in your freezer and make it yourself. And I'm going to show you in just a minute on some ways how to do that that are very simple and easy to do with probably some things right in your own house. So as you can see here, we have several different types of coolers. Um, this cooler right here, that is a cooler that is from Omaha Steaks. Now I would suggest that anybody that does order from Omaha Steaks keep those coolers because those coolers come in handy. They are real thick. They are probably two inches thick and they keep stuff cold. And they also will, if you wanted to use them as a dry storage, you can put dry goods in there and put the lid on and they keep them dry. Um, I've used those several years on, on different trips that I have taken throughout the years. And these things are just absolutely wonderful. And if you look at it, uh, you already bought and paid for it. And it's something you don't have to go out and buy again. This little cooler right down here, I would take, and if you have a small cooler, um, you can take, and uh, I would store beverages of some kind in that. Because if you have to take things out of your refrigerator or freezer and put them into, say, a bigger cooler, that is a, um, that one right there is a 50 quart. This is a 100 quart. So if you've got to move everything and move it into a um, cooler and then pack it with ice and stuff, you want to make sure that you're not opening those coolers too much because this ice has to last you until you have an opportunity to get to a store to purchase more ice. So coolers are a hot commodity when hurricanes roll around. So you may want to think about picking up one of these or several of these depending on how big your household is and having them on hand. Um, you can get them with wheels, without wheels. Um, they come in a wide a range of sizes. Um, so you just have to shop around and see if you find the best deal. Um, Walmart usually carries a pretty good selection of coolers. Um, so, you know, just something to think about. Now let's move on to how we can make our own ice. All right, now let's talk about making some ice. All right, so first thing to remember is when the hurricane's coming and even after the hurricane, ice is probably gonna be pretty limited at any store that you go to. Um, they will be selling out of ice at a very rapid rate, especially if the hurricane is hitting directly for you. So <clears throat> what you wanna do is once you know that something is coming, you know, headed your way, or they think it's going to be heading your way, um, you want to start prepping then for your ice. Uh, you may already have an ice maker. If you do, that's great, um, but that's not going to be enough. So we're going to start off first with um, just your regular bottled water. All right, you can take your favorite water, whatever, um, but you can throw these right in the freezer, and they. Uh, do expand a little bit, but they do not burst. I mean, I use these things in my lunch pail when I go to work and um, I come home at night, throw it back in the freezer, it freezes, and the next morning throw it back in my cooler and, you know, it keeps everything cold all day long. Um, 
<clears throat> these may be good to put into the smaller cooler that I showed you that you were going to put your soft drinks or beer in. You know, it's a hurricane, so you got to have some beer. So, you know, whatever it is you got to put in there that you drink. Um, you know, this way here, you can stack these right down in there and it makes it really nice. Uh, when you're making your ice for your coolers and stuff, you have to kind of like visualize how much stuff you may be putting into your coolers. Now, more than likely, you're probably going to try to take um, your higher dollar items and get into your coolers, say your meats uh, from your freezer and that kind of stuff. Frozen vegetables and stuff, you just leave them in the freezer. And if you make it a bunch of extra ice, you know, just leave them in there and leave the ice in there. Um, but, you know, you're going to want your, your milks and, you know, depends on if you have kids, you know, milks and cheese and butter and uh, anything frozen meats, you know, your high dollar stuff is going to want to go into the cooler. So you have to kind of visualize how much space and stuff you're going to have here. Um, now we are talking that you don't have a generator. You have no way to generate power to keep the refrigerator and freezer going and running. Um, so then, uh, like we buy our eggs and we get them at uh, um, Walmart, they're the cage free and they come in these cool little plastic containers all right so if you don't have ice trays even if you have an ice maker you want to make more ice you know you fill these little suckers up here you close this up so it kind of seals it off a little bit and then if you have several of these you can make them stack them right in your freezer and they stack up really nice and you know you could do depends on how big your freezer is you know and <clears throat> keep making your cubes um, you know, you just, you want to just keep making ice as much as possible in any way, shape, or form you can. Um, I have these uh, little trays right here that I actually use in my smoker. I always keep a bunch of these on hand. They're just a little aluminum foil, but they freeze a lot faster than uh, plastic bowls and stuff do. Um, but I only fill these about half full, try to keep them so that, you know, they're about, you know, an inch, inch and a half thick. This way here, you can slide them down in between things. So you're kind of like, you know, the solid blocks. And once you load your cooler and you put these blocks in there, you know, that's when you want to put all your ice uh, cubes over the top because your ice cubes are going to melt a lot faster than the big blocks. And if you take, say, like a, this is a water, a gallon water jug, or if you had a gallon, um, milk container or half a gallon you know however you buy your stuff um i would suggest saving some of these um if you do have say you know a lot of kids or you go through a lot of milk uh you could freeze up one of these or two of these and put these in a cooler next to your milk and if one of these is frozen solid it'll stay frozen solid for if you can keep your the door closed on it you know you can get two or three days out of just these things being frozen solid because they're inside of an airtight container um, ice that is inside of a container such as this or this will stay longer than cubed ice because the air isn't getting to it Look at that a little science lesson today now <clears throat> these things here you know you, you say I save up you know these coffee containers I use them to put grease and stuff in uh, they're great for storing just about anything in um, you can store uh, you know nuts bolts and the whole nine yards in these things but you can also take and you can freeze in these you can freeze now you can't trying to get it out would be literally impossible but if you could freeze a couple of these and put in the bottom of your cooler that you're gonna pack a bunch of stuff on top of and uh, give yourself a good base it's sealed it's gonna last longer and it takes up less room than this and it has a flat top on it so if you had more than one going across the base of your cooler to stack stuff around and on top of it's going to give you a better um, barrier of cold in the bottom of the cooler than you know just a lot of water in this way here um, you know possibly uh, it will last a, a heck of a lot longer um, Another good thing to remember too is, is, is even if you don't have a cooler, let's say you don't have a cooler of any kind and the you know, hurricane's coming, you can always pre-make some ice, you know, either um, in thin bowls or plastic bowls or something, you know, 
and feel, just take and fill up your freezer. You know, leave everything in there and everywhere you can shove ice, you want to shove ice in there and this way here. If you don't have to open the door that much, when the power goes out, the freezers are already frozen. The things that are in there are already frozen. And now you just added, you took away any space for air with ice blocks and that will um, buy you more time until you may have to start, you know, thinking about what you're going to do, you know, come up with a plan. Um, and then, you know, if the power and stuff stays out for longer than a few days, if it ends up being a week or two weeks, um, you're going to have to start cooking that stuff up or you're going to start losing it. And, um, you know, that's a whole different scenario there. But that's why you want to try to make sure that you have a cooler or something that you can store your frozen products and stuff in. So, if there's a hurricane coming your way, make sure you make extra ice and stuff every little hole possible with ice. Fill it full, cram it full of ice. This way here, if you do lose power and you have to put stuff in your cooler on top of the ice you've already made, this will give you a little buffer to have extra. So basically that's just a little rundown on, you know, some coolers and way to, you know, make some ice and, you know, and um, another great thing you can do with these is uh, I keep these on hand also, empty ones, I keep six, fill them up with water. If the power is going to go out or whatever else and you don't know if they're going to turn off the water or whatever, you have, you know, I got six instant gallons of water. But we will be talking about that in a later video, what you may need. So, my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And until next time, we'll catch you on the frozen side.